In my last video, I talked about how I believed Elon Musk's plan to turn Twitter into X.com, the everything app, was probably a bad idea. In short, I believe this bold new direction for the website would not work out because, well, for one, we don't live in China, and two, addiction. But with that said, there's a lot of things that I didn't say, specifically about what might happen next. For the past year or so, it seems like everybody has been worrying or anticipating the death of the website formerly known as Twitter. At first, everybody thought that they weren't going to be able to keep those servers afloat after all these layoffs. And while there's certainly been a few hiccups, it's, it's, it still seems to be around. Don't get me wrong, Shitter is in a bad spot. It's bleeding money, and while Musk has boasted about record engagements, other sources seem to contradict this. But even with all the uncertainty in the air, a lot of people are still using the site. And not because they necessarily have to. There is no lack of Twitter competitors out there in the wild. Since Soul Musky Boy took over, every person who knows how to use WordPress seems keen on slapping together the next Twitter killer. From Mastodon to Blue Sky to something else you've probably never heard of, we've seen more than a few platforms rise up, gain a bit of traction, and then poof! They're dead. And this has brought up its own series of questions. For one, are people actually even interested in leaving Twitter? Was that new change in ownership such a deterrence that the Twitter faithful would up and leave their favorite bird app? Is Musk's presence so disgusting, so reprehensible that people would refuse to use his platform? Probably not. Yeah, a lot of people don't like Musk, but it's important to remember that a lot of people didn't like the previous administration either. Yet, they all stayed around. This site isn't going to lose hundreds of millions of users because of politics, but it could lose hundreds of millions of users because of policy. Musk is trying his best, or worst, to eke out every ounce of value from this terrible website he paid for, and his options are fairly limited. To be honest, I think we already know what Twitter's fate is. It came from a moment of truth that happened just a few weeks or months or years ago, depending on when you're watching this. See, I think most people knew that no rinky-dink little website was going to be able to compete with Twitter. Here's the problem. When it comes to social media platforms, it's really hard to move everybody from one place to another. If somebody has all their followers on one platform and they're following a bunch of people who are also on the platform, that's the most compelling place to be. It doesn't matter what features the other platforms have. The only way to replicate that exact experience is if everybody just decides to get up and leave the, in like the same weekend. Because of that, it was unlikely Twitter would ever die gradually and bleed users to another platform because majority of people would still be congregated right here. The only kind of company that could make a Twitter competitor would be big tech and it seemed unlikely Google was going to step back into the social media game. Apple's never really shown an interest and I don't think MySpace is due for a big return anytime soon. Twitter's real competition, the only real competition, was going to be from Facebook. And it was well known that Zuck had pivoted from his metaverse plans to a Twitter competitor for some time. It was going to release in summer 2023, and it did. Threads was initially doing quite well, really well. The sign-up rate was astounding, breaking all sorts of arbitrary records, but this was misleading. Unlike organic growth, there was billions of people who had Instagram accounts who could just tap a button to sign up. So I didn't have a lot of faith in Threads just because of these numbers, but the thing was, engagement was really good right off the bat. People were actually using this. And while some had some concerns about limited features, most people that I saw seemed largely optimistic about the potential of this Twitter killer. But as quickly as it rose up, Threads was dead. Yeah, really, Facebook's big project pretty much lost all of its user base within a matter of days. And honestly, there's not really any sign that it's ever coming back. Now, I'm sure if Musk does something exceptionally dumb, if he starts charging people to respond to tweets or something like that, then I'm sure Threads is well positioned to be the go-to app for those who want their micro-blogging fix. 
But as long as Musk doesn't make the actual worst decisions in tech, I can't see threads being able to compete. And that's the thing, in the grand scheme of social media, Twitter isn't that big. It never has been. While a decade ago, some people might have thought it would overtake Facebook, it never ever came close to that. Which might be surprising for a lot of younger people who may have never even used Facebook, but see Twitter as the end-all be-all of uh, communication? Is that, what, is that what we're calling it these days? The thing about Twitter is that it really appeals to a very specific demographic. Only 10% of users generate about 80% of the content. Basically, most people on Twitter don't tweet, or they tweet very infrequently. And those who do mostly just respond to other tweets, or retweet, or post, whatever it's called now. What I'm saying is that 10% keeps Twitter afloat, and from what we can tell from the limited polling data available, that 10% is mostly women talking about politics. Now, I don't know if this is supposed to be surprising or not. Social media platforms like Twitter have an interesting way to drive conversations towards controversial topics like politics. You gotta think, ad rates are based on views. You can increase the number of views and the time people spend on a platform by getting people into arguments. Twitter is a machine built off of rage baiting. Target trends towards people most likely to get upset with those things that are trending and then get people to talk about how awful it is that this thing is trending in the first place. Just start fights, make money. Every time somebody responds to a mean tweet, that's more money for Twitter's pockets. And this is not exclusive to Musk's platform, his handling of this website. This was the entire basis of the Twitter platform forever. It's the basis of social media. Websites designed to get you angry and make that anger addicting and monetizable. I guess the question becomes, is this something that people are fine with? Something they want to continue doing? And I'd say, yeah. A common theme you'll notice with the average Twitter user is how much they talk about how much they hate Twitter. How the website, the users, the platform is fueled by the terminally online. Go touch that grass. Nothing of real consequence or value can come from this platform. This is not the real world, it's just Twitter. And frankly, Twitter is in a perfect position to stay around and keep people around, even if Musk makes dozens of terrible mistakes. Because social media is addicting. It's designed to be addicting. But is this enough? Social media platforms have interested me because, well, not because I, I, I use them that frequently. I really don't care what happens to Twitter. But it's the idea that they're so new, we don't really know what comes next. In the grand scheme of the internet, large-scale social media platforms used by the general public are a relatively new thing. Sure, you might have had some chat rooms in the 90s and a MySpace in the early days of Facebook, but all of this pales in comparison to what happened in a post-smartphone world. And you gotta start asking the question, do we really know whether there's a lifespan for these websites? I know from my personal experience, many people of my age group left the Facebook website once their parents got on Facebook. They didn't want to feel like they were monitored by you know, relatives. They went to where the young people were, the, the, red, the reddits, the twitters. Some stayed on just to communicate with family, but certainly not to post those memes that would give grandmama a heart attack. Now, unlike Facebook, Twitter was always more open, where all people of creeds and religions and skin tones could easily communicate with everybody else. There were no communities, just posts you could engage with. Of course, this utopian ideal of the town square just turned into incessant screeching, as every user hoped to get a brief moment of attention amongst the noise. But what if this isn't the ideal form of social media? What if there is something that is better than Twitter, more ideal to a younger generation? A younger generation who might not find X.com all that appealing. Maybe they want something else, something that's not a Town Square micro blogging platform. Looking at these social media demographics, it's incredibly interesting how each platform seems to so neatly appeal to specific age groups. Why is TikTok only for children. These generational divides are important, and it raises the question whether Twitter is something that will be embraced by, uh, say, a Gen Alpha, 
or is it relegated to the Gen Zs, the Zillennials, and the Millennials? If this is the case, Twitter might not ever die but it might not ever grow. I mean, think about it. By all metrics, Twitter wasn't a Facebook killer. It didn't surpass it in usership, and it really isn't even the same kind of website. But I'm sure for many people in their mid to early 20s, it feels like a successor. It felt like a successor. So with that said, I think something will replace Twitter, but also won't. If you're already on Twitter, if you care about Twitter, I don't think you're going to leave. You don't want to lose your followers. You don't want to lose your your uh, who you're following. And it's very unlikely that any company would want to get into this microblogging thing that just really doesn't make that much money. In an ideal world, you still can't expect everybody to get up and move at the same time. Threads was the last chance. That was it. The, the only way you were getting a Twitter killer. And it failed. So now the only way something replaces Twitter, or X, is if Musk can't pay the bills and people just flee to, to Zuck's afterthought. Yeah, Meta is well positioned to take the not-so-lucrative microblogging seen by Storm in a few years if this whole thing just explodes, but I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know if this is a happy ending to the video or a, a terrible one. For me, any outcome where Twitter still exists is, 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 is not a great. It's not great. But the idea that nothing else can ever be like it is kind of comforting. If X.com isn't going to get new users, if it, well then I guess it is a matter of time before Musk sells or shuts it down, unless he can find some way to make it profitable. But even if he did find success, then it's only a few decades before everybody using this platform is old, and, and they die, and then it dies, and then we can finally lay this bird to rest.